come back to the retro room, or at least just this part of it anyway. So it's been a while since I've been in front of camera, so I thought I would do this little bit in front of camera just for a change rather than just me wake my arms about like an idiot behind the camera. So in last week's video, for those who did not see it, I did say that uh, now and again I will be stepping away from the Batman content, not because I'm bored of it or anything like that. Uh, believe me, uh, I could talk about Batman 24-7. Uh, I just thought, just for fun, because I do bring other items into this room, and I thought it would be fun just to talk about them for a change, rather than just purely Batman. So for this video and a few more, um, they're not going to be back to back, they will be just as and when I feel we need to bring something else into the channel. I will be talking about, for example, Iron Man in this video by ZD Toys. I have this one plus two other examples to go through, but I will discuss that more in the actual meat of this video. But believe me, I still have a absolute ton of stuff to go through that's Batman related. Just want to change things up just a little bit and uh, just look at something else for change. So anyway, let's actually just get on with the subject at hand, which is Iron Man by uh, ZD Toys. Right, the meat. As I said at the beginning of the video from um, ZD Toys, it is Iron Man, the uh, Mark I version. Honestly, uh, you know, how he started and all that. With the uh, the suit just, uh, well, just put together in a cave, wasn't it? So as I said, uh, you know, now and again, I will uh, divulge into other areas of interest. Um, ZD Toys, they do, I believe, the complete range of the Iron Man suits. I don't think I'll get the whole range, but I really do like the Mark I. I just like its design, I like it's all chunky and clunky. That's the sort of thing that I like around here. Although this is made by ZD Toys, their name isn't really on here that I can find. As you can see there, just some imagery there. This doesn't come much the way of accessories. You just get like the, uh, you know, the flame throw effect and a stand as well, fortunately. But they also have a range of Spider-Men as well, if you're a Spider-Man fan. So, uh, yeah. Price-wise, now, there is a bit of story behind this, which I'll go over very, very quickly. Um, basically, I spoke to ZD Toys directly through their uh, sales department. And communication wasn't great, but um, I have the feeling that they assumed I was looking to purchase many, many of these and offered me samples. They weren't for free, I'll tell you that now. Uh, so I picked these up. Um, they weren't expensive. Uh, I think including shipping and everything else, it would actually about 13 pounds or thereabouts. Same with the other two. Uh, they're a, a little bit more expensive, but I'll go through that in those videos. But yes, uh, if you want to look for this, um, I believe they're on AliExpress. Uh, the price range there between sort of 15 and 20 pounds, I think. Or of course there's eBay, but it is more expensive. Uh, I think here at least they're between 30, maybe 40 pounds, around about that sort of figure. So yes. Anyway, the box. So uh, like with a lot of their products, this is a magnetic box, as you can see there. Of course, hiding behind is another image of the figure. Now, I'll tell you, you now, the arc reactor does not light up it is lit up in this image here but it does not light up i'm afraid but it doesn't matter so let's open up the box hopefully it doesn't fall out and there is the figure so i've already had a little play with this and there are things i really like about it and there's other things that which well it's not i don't like but you know you'll find out in a second Let's just put this gubbins out of the way. So we'll look at the accessories pack first. As I said, you do get a stand. Uh, there's the uh, the flame throwers and the sort of I don't know, gearbox or some sort of motor that sits in into his back. Uh, you have to put that on, uh, obviously, yourself. In here is just the figure. So we'll do what we normally do with these things. We'll start from uh, top to bottom and just uh, take a little little bit of a closer look because there are lots of nice details on here of course you could take this and you know add more details there's plenty of room on here to really bring out some more features but I'll go through that in a second but we will get the standouts I don't think I'll need the stand he does stand up by as well he does stand up by itself quite easily it's a nice simple stand you know it's just got Iron Man 
Mark 1 written on there. The stand is in a couple of pieces. We do have this piece which goes into the base, so it gives you a little bit of articulation. I.e. you can move you can move forwards and backwards. It's very slippery this piece. And of course we have you know the grabby parts and again this is a spring loaded for ease. But let's move all this stuff out of the way and let's just have a closer look at the figure. And here it is. So we'll do as I said before top to bottom just picking out the key features of this. So starting with the head I believe from memory, uh, with the eyes particularly, uh, I believe you can see Tony Stark's eyes are through this. They're not protected in any sort of way, but they have, uh, you know, filled those in. Uh, it doesn't really matter so much. It would have been pretty cool to see a pair of eyes poking through there. Or maybe it may look a bit weird, I don't know. Uh, but there's no, uh, you know, there's no head underneath this. I have, I, well, I haven't pulled it off, but you know, it's very much firmly attached. I'm not gonna pull that off, but, but design wise it looks pretty good you know we've got some battle scars on there you know welding lines i mean this thing's filled with you know welding bits and pieces around the back of the head it's fairly plain and simple there but overall it looks quite nice now as for like the midsection so as already mentioned you've got some more welding lines there you could touch those up if you so wish um i'm on the fence whether i will or will not but uh, there's plenty of detail on here. You can see uh, on his right side, our left, uh, I'm assuming it's uh, some sort of part number for a missile or some piece of scrap metal that uh, they've used to build this suit out of. They've used quite a bit of uh, sort of dry brushing on this, which looks quite nice. As for the arc reactor itself, as I said earlier, it does not light up. Uh, there's certainly nothing on the instructions. I used a translator app to read that further in and there's no yeah There's no battery. There's nothing. This it's just a uh, it's just plain like that Which is a bit of a shame. I suppose if you're clever you could uh, Paint that up and you know in some way to make it look like it's glowing or you could if you're really clever uh, Fit it out with some electrics, but this looks like it could be quite tricky to pull apart, but it still looks fine as it is and then you sort of waste area again we've got the welding lines the dry brushing uh, some old paint there from something that they've used to knock this up lots of details around the waist with the little notches and then for his legs so they're not symmetrical they are slightly different from each other as you can see there the uh, this side is a uh, well, more rounded piece this one's more of a flat one it's nice to have something that isn't completely symmetrical i quite like that of course he's got these really clunky shoes which i think look uh, quite funny but you can see like a bit of tony's leg and a part of his shoe just in there looks there is you know some exposure there but i must say his feet particularly they are quite loose but it doesn't really matter so much because you're going to find out in a second about what this thing can and cannot do but underneath the feet it's just uh, it's fairly uh, straightforward there just some rivets and uh, some grippage. For the arms, again, they aren't exactly the same. Uh, for his right arm, we do have like a, uh, I assume that's a gas bottle of some sort for his flame frame feature, which is just on the bottom there. And again, his armor around you know, the shoulders come down his arms. Again, the same sort of technique, some welding lines, some dry brushing, but I think there's plenty of detail on this. It's, uh, it's a fun little figure to look at because there's a lot going on and the same on the other side again we've got this big piece here sort of protecting his left arm again with a flame thrower but no bottle this time maybe that one is feeding both of them I'm not too sure and of course we do have the red button just in there which activates the yeah like rocket boots or something didn't they something like that so that's just there one thing I didn't mention was the chains that go from his hip down to his knees. They, these look absolutely fine. They they are one piece and they don't articulate in any particular way. But they've done a pretty good job on making those look like chains. I mean, on the side there, it does sort of lose a bit of its definition. But again, you could touch this up quite easily. And on the back, we do have their sort of Stark. And I don't know what the rest of that says. Is that? IMO, IMD, 
I can't quite make that out, but it definitely says start there. So obviously they've used some components for welding lines. And then we do have this gap on his back where the sort of box of gubbins go, which I'm gonna do right now, because this is one little area that I do have an issue with. So here is the box of gubbins. Very basically painted. It's just this part here and a little bit on this cylinder, which is they've sort of put any sort of extra paint on. The rest of it's been, you know, painted gray. Uh, I assume that's, yeah, it's, um, it's, a, it's a motor of some kind to fire up his arc reactor. As you can see, there are shapes in his back on both sides, which correspond with some shapes on the back of this. Now, I have found, I have played around with it, and it is, it's not a great fit, and this does quite often pop out, but, so that, you heard it click, well, I hope you heard it click, it's definitely on, but, once you start moving around to get them into certain positions, that does tend to pop out, I find. So you may want to secure that in by other means. But for video purposes, I'll leave it as it is. So that's more or less, you know, the bare bones of the figure. And of course, this does come with a couple of accessories, which are these. These are the, uh, well, they're supposed to look like uh, flames from his flamethrower, but um, I mean, to be honest, it just looks like a tree in autumn. Now, this is one thing I probably will do with these and just, you know, add some smoky effects to this because it just, it just look quite right to me. It just, yeah, honestly, it look, he's holding a bush and the leaves are uh, obviously turning into the orangey red color they normally do in autumn. But obviously these do attach to the figure. And again, there's some issues with it. Now, I think these are directional because if you look at these, there are some, you know, they're not perfectly straight, they they are bending away, so I think they go inwards, I believe. So we'll try this one, his right hand side. This might go in his left arm then, because that's not fitting in there. That's not in there. These are shaped, but oh, there we go. What in there? And we'll put the other in like that there we go so these are made of plastic they're you know they're not soft or anything like that but they are quite heavy so if you do want to have him with his arm up posed it does fall down quite quite easily uh, i do try and keep his arm his elbow bent just to try and keep it up but if you have it right up he'll stay but you may not want it looking like that so you have about halfway down so he's pointing in the direction he wants the flames to go it just it just falls down it's just yeah they're not loose but they cannot support all that weight at one end so they do fall down this arm isn't so bad but i think after a while it, it does tend to slowly go down after a period of time and unfortunately it's uh yeah they're not really that poseable and it just it doesn't look it's yeah it's, it's just like it's holding a couple of bushes a couple of tree branches maybe that's the only real bugbear with this figure just you know we're just with these but i can live without them to be honest and then lastly we just need to have a look at the articulation now because of the design of this it's obviously going to be very restrictive because uh, it's as i say a very chunky um bulky figure but uh he can move so obviously his his arms have a very good no range of movement. The elbows, they're not too bad. Uh, so you can see on this one, that's about the limit for that elbow. It's about 70, 80 degrees, I guess. And this side's even worse. As you can see there, it's, it's just, um, yeah, that, that's your lot. So you can't really get an awful lot of movement, but I think this thing can move enough to satisfy, you know, your displaying needs. It looks pretty cool like that, but again, I can't really have this on because it's just gonna drop down. So I have tried to get him in that pose like he is in the film when I think uh, one of these chains gets uh, shot at and it snaps and he does fall uh, look, no, to one knee. As you can see that his, his knees do move really well actually. They've got plenty of room to move, but it's just this foot. It tends to want to, because it's so loose, it wants to bend right back and it doesn't look quite right. But trying to get him into that pose, 
it's not impossible, but you have to be patient. And again, if I get into shot properly, you see that his foot doesn't look quite right. Um, but he will, he will get there. Just a little bit of encouragement. And there he is. Yeah, anyway, so, so now you're thinking, oh, I'll use the stand to support him. But that's the other problem. Because you've got him in this position, you've sort of blocked most of the access for this. So it can't actually, there's nowhere for this to grip. If you are careful, you can thread it through just behind his legs like that. But then you've got the issue of actually trying to mount this onto the stand and it, it doesn't really quite work and then you got to rearrange his lip. Yeah, it doesn't look as nice as it does if he's just freestanding. Like I say, it, it can be done. Uh, it's just this foot doesn't look quite right, obviously. Um, I don't know how you would go about sorting that out, but it depends what you're looking for. But I think there's plenty of possibility in this. Maybe just be a little bit patient. Now I said lastly, but we've actually haven't had a proper look at the stand, so we'll quickly go through that. So it's going to go one way. So we've got a thin end that end and a fat end that end. So we put the fat end in that end, like so. We simply push that section on there, like so. Just bend that back. You do have to bend this back quite a bit, and then uh, we'll just get him on there, just like that. I do like the spring features in these, they are extremely useful. And there he is. So the Iron Man Mark I suit. You know, even if I did pay full retail price for this, I'd still be quite happy. It's, uh, there's plenty of detail on this. Okay, the accessories, you know, they're not brilliant and they're obviously too heavy, you know, for him to keep up, but you could make your own adjustments to get those to work. And I would recommend painting these up because they just didn't look quite right, in my own opinion. So there we are from ZD Toys. It is the Mark I suit from Iron Man. Overall, a very nice figure, loads of detail, but there's still a little bit left on there for you to, you know, make better if you wanted to. But out of the box, I think it looks really nice. But thank you for watching. Normal Batman content will be resuming in the next video, and I'll probably bring back in the ZD Toy stuff after that and, uh, We'll do that for a little while and see how we get on. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you're new around these parts, please do consider subscribing. And until the next one, I'll see you later. It's Matt in the retro room. Join Matt in the retro room. Watch Matt in the retro room. Subscribe for more and stay tuned.